Yogan Satatanu Shaktam Asheshakaya Prashutam Asheshan Nautsu Kyamo Aratidam Jagana Yopurva Vaidyaya Namostu Tasman Atata Ritu Charya Dhyaya Vyakyasya Maha Itihas Mahur Atreya Dayo Maharashaya So now we are going to talk a little bit on the fundamentals of Ritucharya. The previous videos, video, we were uh, speaking about the fundamentals for Ritucharya understandings. Now it's off. The topics that we are going to cover today is the concepts of Agni, Bala, and Agni Bala. The implication of implications of time framework. The Kapha Pitta Vata cycle for proper health and the provoked states, abnormal states of Vata Pitta and Kapha. So, in the West, people pay a lot of attention to their Prakritis and so on, saying, oh, I'm Pitta, oh, I'm Vata, oh, I'm this and that. But um, as we go uh, studying more deeper the understandings of Ayurveda in India, we came to know to the idea that um, weather and also the flow of uh, time is important to maintain proper health. Doesn't matter if you are X, Y or Z, in the Grishma or in the Varsha or in the Sharat, uh, Hemanta, Shishira and uh, Basanta, um, you're going to be impacted by the weather and your body will have to adapt, it will have to respond to that. So if you're calling this winter, uh, spring, summer and autumn or doesn't matter. The point is that for Ayurveda, for you to be healthy, you need to know about the flow of the energy of the sun and the moon in the earth during the year because this impacts mainly two things in your system three one is the strength of your digestive power capacity the agony concept is huge but uh, here we are going to just take as the uh, overall metabolism how it's working in its basal form. The second concept is the concept of the amount of physical effort, physical exercise that you can endure without damaging your health. This is Bala. We also have this joint concept of Agni Bala. And we also have the third concept of Rasa being the idea of the amount of water availability that you are in your body. Okay? So, the important thing is that according to Ayurvedic classical point of view of Ashtanga Hridaya and Charak Sanhita and so on, as long as the year is increasing the temperature, your body will need to be less producing heat for you to be alive. When the weather is not providing you uh, sufficient hot uh, heat, your body will have to produce this heat so you keep alive. Okay? So there is a reverse, an indirect relation between the external heat and the internal digestive capacity. When we are in the winter, our body needs to produce more heat so we can uh, survive. Considering winter, a temperature below 20, 15, 10 degrees Celsius. I don't know that in Fahrenheit, but it's cold enough that it, you start to shake. Oh. Uh, when it's hot, for the point of view of Ayurveda, it means that you start to sweat without many effort. You just breathe and sweat. 
You just walk and you sweat. You are not doing physical exercises. So, as per classical Ayurveda, when it's really cold or it's more cold, your body will need to produce more bodily heat. And for Ayurveda, who will produce this bodily heat is the Agni. And when your body is already hot, the metabolism will have to decrease so you do not get kind of fever. You do not get overheated and your body starts to melt. Your protein starts to uh, go uh, away. Go away it means that it, they are going to lose their form because it's too hot. So, in Ayurveda, the digestive capacity is directly related to the, the, the temperature of the metabolism will have direct impact on the external temperature. The external temperature will have a, a direct impact on the body temperature. So, for Ayurveda, we have more digestive capacity not in the summer, we have more digestive capacity not in the spring, we have more digestive capacity in the winter, and in the winter we need to take heavier foods. In the summer we need to take uh, easier to digest lighter foods because if we take too much fried foods or cooked foods when it's hot, this will increase too much the temperature. I don't know if you agree with this point of view, but um, if you realize that when you're in winter you feel more hungry, if you're not sick, this is true. The second concept is the amount of strength that you have to do physical exercise. Nowadays we are very lazy from the point of view of having all the things in the fridge or in the oven and so on. But when it was less electricity around us, we needed to produce our food in a more consistent manner. We could not fridge them and just go to the market once in a week or once in a month. So during the winter, because the agony is stronger, the amount of physical capacity, physical exercise, the amount of capacity that you have to do physical exercise will increase. In Ayurveda, to put this short, if you are with strength, it's because your agony is strong. And for example, when you are uh, going to we are with a lot of loose motions, you can have a Schwarzenegger biceps. But in that moment, if you are with loose motions, we are not go you are not going to be able to lift that heavy weights. Because for Ayurveda, the uh, amount of physical exercise that you can do, the amount of energy that you have to do efforts is directly related to agony. So, in this consideration to Ritucharya, when you do physical exercise and it's summer, you dehydrate very quickly. Because nowadays we have air conditioners and so on, fans, we don't feel this so much. But make a, a try, go skating or whatever in a sunny day in the summer at uh, noon. Just do this one day <laughs> and see how easy you are going to be uh, weak. How, how much sun will be able to destroy your strength. Okay? Do the same experience when the day, if it's snowing, probably you're not going to be able to uh, go with the skate, but you can go in the lake that it's frozen. See that we can stand more the production of bodily heat, but we cannot stand so much about the production of heat when it's already hot outside because we cannot exchange, exchange temperature. Our body is designed to produce the heat but is not designed to uh, release heat in so uh, effective manner. So during Ritu Charya, one important concept is that in the summer we are weak and in the um, winter we are strong as per the 
Agnibala Rasa uh, framework. This is important to understand the cycle of seasons in Ayurveda. Here we are going to propose that the first cycle, the first part of the cycle is a kapha or kapha part. The second is a pitta and the third is a vata. I know that you usually say vata, pitta and kapha, but from the biological point of view, life starts in kapha age from 0 to 25 more or less. It goes for Peter stage from 25 years old to 50s, 60s, and then on, onwards on Vata stage of life. In this sense, we are going to consider here, this is not the classical point of view, but it's not against it, we are going to consider that uh, during the last part of the winter, it's already very cold, and uh, uh, in, during the spring there is a lot of water being melted inside so these are going to be times when we are going to be dealing mainly with the provocation with the st abnormal state of kappa vikrita vikrita deham titte vartayam ticha when they are uh, in an abnormal state they destroy life when they are in the proper state, they protect, they sustain life. This verse is about uh, Vata, Pitta and Kappa. It's in the beginning of Sutra Stana, um, Sutra number 6, or in the first chapter. So, this first part of this cycle, we will pay more attention to Kappa state that can be easily abnormal, and this is not bad. Let's change. The second two cycles, the two seasons, there is going to be um, Grishma and Varsha. And Varsha is going to be translated as monsoons, Grishma as summer. It's a dry summer. And they are going to be provoking um, Vata, Pitta, Pitta, Vata, whatever. And the third part is going to be Sharad and um, Hemanta. That is going to be provoking Pitta and Vata and let's see. The main point is that in classical Ayurveda of Ashtanga Hridaya and Charak Sanhita, they designed a framework, this is important, they designed a framework that could explain what was happening 2,000 years ago, whatever, in India to understand the impact of seasons in Bali, Kapha, Pitta and Vata, Vata, Pitta and Kapha, whatever. The system of Tridatus or Tridoshas. The seasons are developed in the Ayurveda framework only because we can for we can understand the impacts of the weather in Vata, Pitta and Kappa to understand the disease process and when it's more easier or beneficial to do um, timely cleanings of Kappa with Vamana, with Pitta as Virechana and Vata with Basti. We don't need six uh, seasons, by definition we can have four, we can have two, we can have three, we can have five, but usually it's not going to be necessary more than six, uh, maybe. But we should not understand the classical Ayurveda of Ashtanga Hridaya and so on in the purpose to fit all the weather in the world in this rutus. Because in the Kerala, there was already uh, different thoughts about the Ritochara. And they uh, removed one and put another, so they could live their reality in a more uh, precise manner. It's kind of misleading to, uh, to understand the framework of Shadaritus as being perfect for every place in every time of the world. The important thing is that they were uh, giving 
a clue on how to provide a system that you can develop your own system to the place that you live so you can see the movements of kappa, pitta and vata in the body. Some people say that the perfect weather is the Himalayan ones. The people from North India will support this view. That the Shadaritus were originally taken to explain the weather in the Himalaya region and not so much in Kerala and so on. These are more academic discussions. But here we are standing apart from them. We are just saying, when you study Ayurveda, you have to understand the flow of the energy of the sun and the moon in the earth. And the season that is going to come before, and the season that is going to become, that will come after, they also have to be studied when you're studying the season that you are. For example, if you are studying the season B, you also have to consider that the season A was before and the season C is going to be after. You cannot, you must not study only the season B and try to understand it. Because, for example, in the European countries, spring and autumn in general ways are quite similar. But because Autumn follows summer and goes before winter. The um, appropriate regime for that reader is completely different even if the weather in terms of water, humidity and the sunlight is similar to the spring because spring is after winter and precedes the summer. The state of Vata, Pitta and Kappa in the body is always responding this thread of the seasons. So we should always consider, for example, in the spring, kappa is going to be provoked, but in the autumn it's not going to be provoked, because we have a kind of rules for vata, pitta and kappa, so that they are out of their um, supportive state, their dhatu function, and they start to work in their doshic manner as tridosha. But this we are going to see in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe. We are going to publish some new English videos now. And also, if you want to share this information with someone that you like, please do so, because uh, we would like to see more comments in our videos also. Okay? Thanks for watching. Om Gurave Namaha